Kelly, open with a statement and then uh, take questions. Please raise your hand and hit the mic before you ask your question. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the media. As we prepare for uh, round one tonight of the entry draft, uh, we made a trade today, trading Riley Smith to uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins for a third round pick in 2024. I'd like to thank Riley for his uh, time in Vegas. He's one of the original players that we selected in expansion, a six year player. We're uh, proud that he leaves the Stanley Cup champion. I know that he is going to get a good opportunity in Pittsburgh. I know that he will do well. Our objective has been to uh, try to keep uh, as much of our roster together as we can. I made the comment when I did year-end media that I think we'll be able to return uh, our team almost intact, which is pretty uncommon for a Stanley Cup winner. Uh, we have some free agents uh, of our own that we uh, are working on. Uh, you know, Ivan Barbashev being one of those players who uh, we signed to a contract today. We think this will give us the ability to pretty much return our team uh, in whole. So that was our objective as we went into free agency. Unfortunately, uh, to get there, uh, we moved Riley to, uh, to Pittsburgh to facilitate some of the other moves that we want to make. Uh, we were not looking to bring anyone, out, anyone in from outside our organization. All of the uh, decisions that we were making were on uh, people that we just want to stand the cup with. So, by definition, that makes those decisions difficult and challenging uh, to make. But uh, we uh, uh, we feel that we uh, got our way through it and, and uh, are excited about what uh, what it could mean for the makeup of our roster. I'll take any questions. Hi, Kelly, Jesse Granger, The Athletic. You mentioned how tough the decision is in between going between Ivan and, and Riley. What ended up being the deciding factor? Well, it's not between Ivan and Riley. We've got other uh, free agents as well. Everything intertwines, and uh, there's different ways that you can get to uh, 83.5. So uh, internally, we never uh, made it a decision about uh, one versus the other. I think what we uh, did talk a lot about was uh, uh, Barbashev's impact uh, on our roster when we acquired him from uh, St. Louis, his ability to fit in so seamlessly with, uh, with Jack Eichel and Jonathan Marshall so to give us uh, a really good top line and uh, uh, you know I made the comment when we acquired uh, Ivan on March uh, or late February early March that we've been looking for a player like this for some time he's uh, in the prime of his career we uh, you know, gave up a good young player to acquire him he came in he played extremely well uh, we won a Stanley Cup. He was a big part of that. We wanted to uh, we wanted to keep him. So that's uh, that's uh, you know, that's where the conversation began. And then from there, you start to go through your different ways of, uh, of addressing uh, your salary cap and getting uh, getting it to where it needs to be. Kelly, hey, Bill Price, NHL.com. You guys won the Cup about two weeks ago. When do you go from Cup mode to where you you know you start the ball rolling on? this sort of trade and, and signing with Ivan? Uh, we won the cup on uh, Tuesday, uh, 15 days ago, I guess. Um, Wednesday, I went into the office for a couple of hours where really all we did was reminisce about the night before. Uh, you know, from Thursday on, we've been working in preparation for the draft. From Thursday on, we've been working uh, in uh, discussions with our pro staff on, uh, you know, the decisions that we had to make on, on the roster of the big team. Uh, we've hired uh, a coach, uh, Ryan Craig, for our American League affiliate in Henderson. So there's not uh, a lot of time uh, in the NHL after you win the Stanley Cup to put your feet up because you're, uh, you know, in, in a good way, you're behind 31 other teams or 30 other teams that have been busy on all of these uh, important dates and important uh, events uh, for some time. But uh, it's a problem any of us would happily uh, have, and we'll get some time to. Uh, reflect and enjoy it uh, a little bit more, you know, once we get through this uh, extremely busy part of our season. Hi, Kelly. Uh, Dan Kingerski, Vegas Hockey Now. Your other big name free agent, Aiden Hill, there were some reports that he was close to uh, an extension with you. Optimism that gets done pretty quickly. How would you categorize those talks? We've been in discussion with Aiden and his representatives. They are 
uh, working really hard to uh, you know make this happen to, to help in the night it's one of the things that we still have to uh, continue to work at to uh, to see where we where we finish with uh, with his status on our team Kelly that Josh with the Canadian press and he's want to keep your group together but just looking at the at the UFA market in general what do you, what do you see they're not the big names that they usually are and do these sort of dates like July 1st, the trade deadline, they started to lose a bit of their luster just because of the flat cap and it's so hard to make moves. Well, we've been living with the, the flat cap for a while and, you know, as, as you went through the pandemic and the, the salary cap was flat, to me, it took a while for even teams, fans, and media to really understand what the ramifications of the flat cap are. And you know, last year to start the season, there was 19 teams uh, in LTIR. When you have restricted free agents, which was the challenge we faced a year ago, we had a number of really good young players that have gone on to be important players on our team.